ends Wednesday, 9 Eastern and Pacific, only on CNBC. We invite you to watch an MSNBC special event Monday. Beyond Borderlines will be hosted by Lawrence O'Donnell with Maria Teresa Kumar. It is a special two-hour town hall event where we take an in-depth look at immigration and the role of the Latino population in life and politics. It's airing Monday night at 10 Eastern right here on MSNBC. So are your friends making you fat? A new study suggests that people's weights and fitness levels are linked to the habits of the people they spend time with. The effect is about 40 to 70 percent as large as the effect of one's own habits, showing that poor fitness may actually spread from person to person. I'm joined now by David Rand, a fellow at Harvard's Department of Psychology, and he is live in Boston. And a good morning to you. Good morning. What do you make of these findings? Do you really think there's a correlation between fitness levels from one person's friends and their own fitness level? Yeah, so that's clearly what we see in our data, that uh, the more obese friends you have, the more likely you are to become obese yourself. So w there are two theories, apparently, on why fat may be contagious. contagious rather. One is perhaps that your lazy friends make you lazier and the fit friends make you more fit. The second one is that maybe people choose to associate with friends that have similar lifestyles. Of those two, is there one that seems to be the more likely scenario? Yeah, so part of the point of this study was to try and tell the two of those apart. Uh, and so we were specifically trying to show it's not just that people choose to be friends with other people that are like them, but that it really is for a given set of friends uh, having obese friends is more likely to make you become obese. Do you find anything in terms of distinguishing the difference between friends and family? Because so often you see an entire family, parents and children following in the same footsteps. Any distinguishing factors there? So that's a great question. Uh, in all of this, people, we've been saying friends, but really what it is, it's social contact. So we're talking mm. about friends, family, and coworkers. Uh, and in that particular study, we didn't have enough data to tell differences between those three different types of social contacts, but it's an important question. Is there anything one can do to break out of it? Uh, yeah, so I feel like the, the sort of take-home message from this study is that there's this important social aspect of obesity and that uh, people should be thinking about this, public health policymakers should be thinking about it. Um, it has a sort of uh, silver lining in that it means that if you can affect the obesity status of some people, that doesn't affect just them, but it can affect everyone else in a positive sense too, in that if there are fewer obese people, then there's less uh, pressure or whatever, there's less sort of transmission to make non-obese people become obese themselves. So, so David, wait, I want to bottom line this. Does this mean that you need to look at your friends and look at their physicality, their appearance and all that before, yeah, or at least take that into consideration before making friends or, or hanging out with a certain no. group of people? No, absolutely not. I don't think that that's the implication of this because friendships and social contacts are extremely important and valuable along all different kinds of dimensions. And this is just one very small part of, uh, of a relationship. But I think that the bottom line for this is that uh, it's in your interest to try and help your obese friends lose weight, hmm. that oh. that'll come back to help you in the future. Okay. Harvard uh, psychology fellow David Rand, thank you so much for joining us here on MSNBC. Thanks a lot. It was an ordeal they will never forget. Passengers from that stranded cruise liner are talking about what they went through. And in just a few minutes, we're going to talk with a woman and her young daughter about what they experienced on that crippled ship. So stick around because you're watching MSNBC Saturday.